Hi everybody, this is Sal Calora and um, today I'm going to go through the creation of a new service profile that is a clone of an existing service profile um, both from a disk perspective and from a UCS perspective. So generally when you're cloning an operating system whether it's in a hypervisor or Windows or Linux um, you have to provision the server, you have to provision all of the different firmware and BIOS versions and settings. On top of all that, you have to install the operating system when you're finished um, and do all the patching involved. So one of the things that UCS uh, provides is the ability to shortcut all of the uh, aforementioned um, BIOS uh, configuration and updates and firmware updates. Uh, it enables you really to take an existing working server and take everything about it and clone it. Um, at the same time, on the disk side, um, what's really nice is that you're able to take a working operating system, snapshot it, and clone it as well. So um, what you're going to see here um, in the screen here is my UCS system. I've got two uh, service profiles uh, called Demo VM 1 and 2. Um, I've got a SAN switch here, which is a, a Cisco 9124. Um, and as you can see um, from the Floggy database, um, I've got a bunch of, of uh, different targets um, and, and initiators here. So here's a, a NetApp system. Um, and then here are the two UCS uh, fabric interconnects. So here's, here's one fabric interconnect there, and there's the other fabric interconnect there. Uh, and then there's a bunch of initiators, and these are the different Cisco, um, you know, blades that have been booted up. And then on the on the target side, in this particular setup, I've got a NetApp array um, set up, and right now there's a a VM master uh, volume that is a was basically created as a clone uh, of uh, of a working setup. So what I did was I took UCS1, I installed um, VMware onto it, and then took a, a clone of it and split it. And now I have a master image that I could always use to, to clone from. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to clone a service profile, and then we're going to clone the disk and show you how easy it is and how straightforward it is to set up our operating systems. And this one is VMware, but the next one will be uh, Windows as well. I'll do a Windows um, demonstration as well. So um, I'm going to go to, say, Demo 2 here, um, and I'm going to clone this. So I'm going to clone it. I'm going to call it Demo VM 3. Demo VM dash three. Okay, and, and now that's created. So it has a blue box because it's unassociated. So right now this particular um, this particular uh, service profile is not associated with any particular blade. Um, so what I have to do now is associate it with a blade in my UCS chassis. So I'm going to grab an existing server. So we're going to say take um, chassis one slot six there's a server there with 24 gig of ram in it i'm going to go ahead and assign it to that okay so now that server is currently in the process of of booting up and as you can see on the on the network side i've gotten my mac addresses assigned and then at the same time if i go to my storage tab i've got my worldwide port names and node names assigned as well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to zone my sand based on on those worldwide port names. So I'm going to go into my switch here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a show zone, and you can see that I have zones set up for the for the two uh, existing systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mimic that configuration. So I'm going to set that up and put it in vSAN 10, and I'm going to say member. PWWN. Now in this case it's it's A004 and B005. So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab everything except that and I'm gonna make that five. And then at the same time I'm going to do the same thing, but make this uh, A006 uh, A006 or B00. Uh, I already did B005, I'm gonna do A0004. And then the target is going to be the same. The target's going to be the NetApp. So I'm going to say member and then just paste. And now I have my zone set up. Now I have to, what I have to do is show the zone set. So the zone set right now, uh, it's called foo, <laughs> of all things. Um, so I'm going to say zone set name foo bsan10. And I'm going to say uh, member 
um, and then the, na the name of the member is demo vm3 underscore san. Okay, and then I'm going to do a zone set foo, zone set name foo, or zone set activate, I should say. I'm going to activate the zone set. Okay, and that was how easy it is. Save my configuration. So that's how easy it is to do zoning. So a lot of people that I talk to around the Northwest here, they say that fiber channel is hard. I mean, this seems pretty easy. Um, with iSCSI, you still have a lot of the same types of mappings between um, the the setup on the server and the setup on the on the on the target. So this is really no different. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. So now that I've got that done, now it's time for me to actually go make my snapshot. So I'm going to go um, to my my uh, NetApps uh, uh, filer here, and you can see that I still don't have the LUN created, and I don't have the initiator uh, group set up yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my um, I'm going to go ahead and telnet here into my NetApp and get into this guy here. Oops. Let me get the password right. Hmm. I'm not getting my password right. There you go. So what I'm going to do is issue the LUN, the LUN clone command. So I'm going to say LUN clone create, and as you can see, I've got um, a couple of different uh, items I have to create here. So I'm going to say the, the path of the new volume is vol ucs1 slash ucs3. Um, and then I'm going to say the parent of that is going to be slash vol uh, slash ucs1 slash vm master. And then the parent snapshot is going to be um, I think it's called UCS-VM master. Okay, so that LUN is now created. If I go up here and just refresh my screen, you can see now I've got a 15 gig LUN that is a clone. Now I need to split that clone off of its parent in order to create it as an independent set of bits. So I'm going to say LUN clone split, and then I have to do start, and then the path. So I'm going to say vol slash UCS3. Oops. UCS1 slash UCS3. There you go. So the split was started. When it's done, I'll get a message. So let's see how our server is doing. So if I go to my general tab and I do a KVM, see where we are in the boot process. Okay, so the split was completed as you can see here. So I'm connecting up to the KVM now. Okay, so the system is still booting. It's finished. It's going through its, its boot cycle. The last piece I need to do is create the initiator groups on the array. So what I'm going to do is add a new initiator group called UCS3. And then what I'm going to do is add some initiators to it. Okay, and the initiator names are going to be the same as are in my my uh, my zone. So if I do a show zone here, I'm going to grab my B005 and add that in there, and then I'm going to add another one, which is A004. And now I've got, as you can see here, I've got a path all the way through. So I have my LUN mapped to my initiator group, which is the last stage. So I got to go here, and I have to go to initiator groups. Oops, got to go here, and then I have to click on initiators and assign the groups. So I have to go edit, go to initiators here, and move the group over. Okay, so now that's done. So now, as you can see, I've got a list of initiators that are now assigned to the LUN all the way through. If I do a show floggy database here, I should see, there they are. So there's A004, right, uh, and B005. They're logged into the fabric. So if I go to my, my, my uh, setup here, I didn't get it zoned in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reboot the server here. 
and when it comes up this thing should boot directly into VMware so we're gonna go ahead and let that reboot so in the time it took to explain it I didn't uh, I didn't get it done in time so a simple reboot will now now that the the initiators can see the target LUN all the way through the fabric uh, we should be able to boot up so we'll see how that comes up so a couple of things while that's booting up the first thing is um, I've told um, through the the configuration here I told the system to get its its HBA um, configuration as you can see here from a pool this BLV-PN-A and for this one to get its uh, set up from PN-B uh, and if I go to the SAN tab you could actually see that so if you go to the A you can see which initiators are assigned to which service profile now notice that I'm not assigning it to an actual blade I'm actually assigning it to the service profile and that's very very important because um, you can move this from blade to blade to blade to blade and all of that will be identical there will be no differences between um, the PNs that are assigned on any particular blade and that's one of the powerful things about UCS is that it allows you to do that it allows you to move the profiles from blade to blade to blade with everything staying the same and when I say everything I mean everything the versions of things the configuration of the various components uh, will all stay the same so if I go to my my VM here you could see that the boot order was copied from the existing system and if you look here you could actually see that I've got the target the the PWWN of the target is the same as this right here you could see that e, E993A4 is exactly where I'm booting and LUN0 is the first LUN assigned and if you go into here you could actually see that UCS3 has LUN0 for these initiators right so that's an easy way to see and as you can see ESX is booting up right so that's a very very simple way in in less than five minutes to be able to actually um, get a system booted uh, and get it up and running very very quickly so um, thanks for watching the video I appreciate your time and uh, come back and visit us at Sal's uh, DC list dot com as well as www.ucsguy.com slash wordpress thanks